um, I'm very pleased to welcome Ashley Stone um, and Ido Meyer. Is it it's just me? Uh, okay, Ashley, it's just you, perfect, on stage from Maxi Molding Technology. Uh, and now it will be about uh, metal injection molding, right? Am yes, I right? So Perfect. Right. So it's, uh, uh, the title is Semi-Solid Metal Alloy Injection Molding, the Future of Lightweight Metal Parts. I'm very, I'm very excited to hear your presentation. Me, me too. Enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Thanks a lot. Um, I'm very honored to be here and to be able to speak about our company. And also thanks a lot for everybody who talked before me, especially now uh, with Dr. Müller. It was very interesting to see injection, plastic, injection molding for plastic because we're diving into injection molding for metals. <clears throat> uh, I guess it's the green one, right? Yes. <laughs> Good. We have, um, first of all, I'm from the company Maxi Molding Technology GmbH from Germany, uh, Bavaria. And we have a few problems that we identified and that we want to tackle. So one, you can see manufacturing is the largest CO2 polluter in general. And then another thing was also transportation, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess everybody knows that. And another thing, another problem that we see is that cars are quite heavy and production is very energy intensive. And as we've seen today, a lot of uh, different materials and different technologies are being uh, yeah, research to make that easier to produce cars and lighter and faster. Um, right now, normally, the body parts are stamped from sheet metal and they're welded together and it's quite complex and you have a multi-step process and you have a lot of pro like steps in this process which yeah, takes up some energy and some material. Um, but we asked ourselves, well, what, could, what, what would happen if we could make large area parts that can be casted directly? Um, before I explain how we do that, the third problem that we see is in the foundry itself. So we have been making metals for like 5,000 years the same way. Like that didn't, didn't change a lot. We just liquefy it and then we put it into a mold and then you, you, you wait till it's cold and you have your metal part. And that has some disadvantages. So as you can see here, we have a lot of processes in the whole uh, casting process. We have the melting, we have the transportation, we have to keep it warm, we have to cast it itself, and often you have to clean it afterwards. And these five processes, which are or five steps of the whole process, which are only like half maybe of the, all the steps, uh, take about 66% of the whole thing. We, we're trying to use a third of this, so only two, 22%. Um, the problem about this is like, as I said, the energy costs are, are, are big. Um, we have some metal, light valuable metal that is being lost uh, in every step. And in some uh, factories, there are still harmful gases used. Uh, so what have, been, what have you been trying so far? Um, may, some of you may have heard of the Idra press, from, which is used by Tesla right now. It's like a 430 ton press, it's a gigantic machine. Uh, to make big parts, like to cast really big parts. That's what's trendy right now, kind of. And we're quite close to a, to a technology called Tixel Molding. Has maybe anyone heard of that? Which is, um, well, pretty good technology for small and medium-sized parts, but it's, it has quite high uh, maintenance costs and operational costs. Uh, the Giga Press I already uh, told you about. It's <laughs> a really big machine. It can yeah, the whole casting cell is super large, very complex, inefficient, and also just transportation is heavy. Like it is done in Italy and then transport 450 tons to the US just to build up a machine. And then you basically build the factory around the machine. And also was very interested to hear about um, the metal printing and how Deutsche Bahn is using that a lot. And I mean, it's super good, it's definitely the future, but um, that was also maybe a question, like it's not the best thing suitable for mass production. Like it, right now a 3D printer is not, is very much slower than casting a part. So which makes very much sense for prototype production and stuff like that, but less sense for I wanna make one million parts of this metal part, then I'll probably not go and take, get a 3D printer. I'd rather get the die casting. Now, what we propose is that we have a solution um, that is better <laughs> using a partially liquid melt, which is called, uh, well, semi-solid, 
the semi-solid process. And um, as an inspiration, we kind of use a coffee machine. So that's where we want to be. We want to just put the material on top and then have the metal part at the end, like a coffee machine. Maybe choose which part you want to have, and then it does it for you. And that kind of also means, you know, cleaner factories like this, this idea of, if you look, if you think of a, fa of a foundry, then it's like, okay, there's, you know, liquid metal and everybody's in these uh, aluminum suits and it's super hot and it's, it's dirty, et cetera. And we think of it more like a server room. <laughs> it should be, you go in, it's very tidy. You put your, your material on top and then you get your parts. Now, the question is, well, how, how are you gonna do it <laughs> as well? We've been researching a lot uh, and we have a few patents um, in a special field called semi-solid metallurgy, which is basically the idea which Tixel molding is using. And we built a light metal injection molding machine, or we are building it right now. We're uh, building the prototype. And the advantages are that we, are, we don't have any emissions of, of, of like harmful gases. We're trying to achieve 90%, 94% less energy consumption compared to classical methods and 50% less material consumption. And um, the speaker before us, they have been talking about how like in the old process you have your part and then you have these long parts that connect uh, the, the different parts that you have in the mold. This is all material that's kind of thrown away more or less, or in the best part, recycled again. But we want to try to do it without. Um, yeah, I'll get into the solution now. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is part of the machine, which is called Maxi Molding. Um, we kind of enclosed the, the whole production steps in, the, in this new type of injection molding machine, as I said, with the idea of a coffee machine in, in the background. And the technology, we call it solid to solid part forming. Um, it's basically not heating the metal until the point where it's liquef liquefies, but where it comes to be like a slurry. So, um, for example, you have 50% of liquid and 50% of solid, and that in, in one material. It depends on how, how you heat it up. So if you, for example, for magnesium, you need to reach like 680 degrees to, to, to liquefy it. And now we're using like 100 uh, Celsius less, or up to 480 from 520, to just put the metal into a state where you can form it, but it's not liquefied itself, which has two main advantages. First of all, less energy consumption. And second of all, actually the, the microscopic structure is better in terms of porosity. So if you overheat a metal, you kind of destroy all the connections in between and then put it back together. If you do it semi-solid, you're just partially melting it, so you still have your globuli, that's what's called globuli, that are dispersed in this slurry, and they make for better parts in terms of uh, porosity. Um, here you can see basically these uh, microscopic structures. Uh, also with die casting, what you, or with the, the classical process, what you sometimes have is air entrapment. No, if you completely liqu liquefy it, it's easier for air to get trapped inside. And then you have something like called dendritic structures, which are also not um, optimal. And with our semi-solid process, you have these, yeah, these globalized, and we stay up to around 500 uh, degrees to mold the part. Um, yeah, you can see that we never touch the line where it li li uh, liquef liquefies com completely. Yeah. But it's still possible to kind of change the percentage of how much you want to liqu liquefy it, and that gives you different properties of the metal. So it's a difference if I make a metal, let's say, out of only 5% liquid material and the rest is 95 solid, or the other way around. Depending, for example, you're, you're able to make very, very, very thin structures uh, if you don't, if you like have a very high percentage of um, liquid in there, but not completely liqu liquefy it. Um, well, an inspiration is, <laughs> maybe uh, that was funny when I saw Engel, because it's kind of, uh, yeah, it comes from plastic injection molding for everybody who, I guess most of you people know how, how it works, but basically, you know, when you put in the granulate on top, you have this heating system, the heating elements that heat up the material, and then you have a screw, an extruder that pushes the material into the mold, just as a refreshment how, how in, uh, direct injection molding works. Now you'll see it, the, the screw kind of feeds the granule inside and the after, uh, animation afterwards we saw on my last presentation. Yeah, 
So what we basically did, we took this tixel molding thing and uh, kind of just turned it around 90 degrees, so, which gives us a few more uh, advantages. One of them obviously being gravity helping us with kind of transportation of, of, the, of the material. Um, but also we, we don't use a screw and that gives us a high advantage because this screw that you see there is very expensive and has to be maintained a lot because it has to have a special metal, etc., etc., etc. So the real process to get into it is like you have these, we start with chips, yeah, with like these little parts of magnesium in that case, so we are team magnesium, definitely. Um, the step two is that we put it into a levit so-called levitation processor, which you know cleans the cleans the holes, um, cleans the chips and degreases them and dries them and pre preheats them to 200 degrees. Then this is basically the heart of the whole machine, is a, a kind of a re revolver-shaped cylinder, where we have the heating elements, where the, uh, the preheated MG chips go inside. They will be heated by nine to 12 heating zones with a very precise temperature control and then being molded uh, into a mold. And right now we plan for two cavity molding, but there's even yeah, multi-drop possible or single large parts, will I, which I will explain a little bit later. Um, so yeah, compared to other processes, we're more or less there. So you see this, um, uh, you see this diagram where you see how much casting pressure you need and what the gate velocity is. And there you can see that we're operating with <laughs> a lot of pressure. Uh, kind of makes sense, right? Because you, we, are, we don't use the li completely liquefied metal, but we use uh, this slurry, the semi-solid state. And uh, therefore we have, yeah, some we can do some things that all the other processes can't do. For example, as I said, very thin walls um, through this process. Uh, there you see the, the, the patent again for the machine. Kind of to sum, to sum it up, um, we don't need the screw, we don't need the extruder. Uh, we have a non-return check valve that, that is in this vertical maximum molding machine and we have the thermal mass reactor that gives us precise temperature control. And it's a modular system. Um, we separate the, the shot control system with independent hydraulics. Also, for cooling, we have a microspray system and something that apparently not a lot of machines do is a, a mold heat recovery. So as you can even see in the lower part of the machine, the heat recovery. So there's a lot of heat that's being unused in these processes. And um, we try to recover that heat. Um, it's obviously a vacuum system and the only thing that you then need is a part takeout robot uh, manipulator. Yes, so... Um, one part that is maybe <laughs> more interesting is how to do large parts. Yeah? So and there's this, as I mentioned, there's the Hydra Gigapress, which takes another approach. They just say, okay, we want big parts, so we make a big machine. And then we just make a big mold and that's it. Um, we propose something that's more modular and we think a little bit, uh, well, how to say, more flexible and better is uh, to have like a um, how would you call it, a multiple injection system where you have multiple injections over the whole part and then control them to kind of, yeah, mold it not with just one direct injection. The problem with one direct injection is if you have a big part, let's say it's this big and your injection is here, then this part that is here, the part, the material, will, uh, will have a different time to cool off than this part. So that's a big problem with big parts and casting. And we kind of try to do it with this uh, multi-point hot runner system. Just as you can see how it works, more or less it's just an animation, but as I said, you have this one injection and then you have multiple injections over the whole part that puts in more material as the material kind of uh, goes through the whole mold. Obviously that gives you advantages like you don't, need to have, you don't have to buy or have to build a 500 ton machine. You can more or less do it modular. You can say, hey, uh, we need this part. Okay, I can count, I need like 10 injections. And then you can do it with a very much smaller machine. Um, well, what is the result? Uh, as you can see, the automotive industry is screaming for lighter parts. And there is a way to, yeah, to separate, to take a few parts out and make them, for example, out of magnesium. Our machine right now is built for magnesium, so uh, I'm definitely the team magnesium, and I think that is the light, well, uh, light metal of the future. Um, as we have also heard from uh, Herrn, uh, Dr. Tower from the International Magnesium Association, 
Um, yeah, it's a really good medal. <laughs> I can only um, be a fan of it. Here you can see from a Rolls Royce Phantom the mag magnesium front instrumental panel. So magnesium has been used in the industry for decades, basically. Uh, my motorcycle has, uh, has rims made out of magnesium, although it's from the 80s, maybe that's why. And uh, we think that this is going to change. So there's going to be more and more parts uh, for magnesium. And we were going to need more new processes and new machine to kind of uh, build those parts in a very energy, energy efficient way. Um, yeah, I'll, this is unfortunately uh, my CTO, Ashley Stowe, cannot be here. But I am, <laughs> but I'm not talking about, talk too much about that. My last point that I'll uh, try, to, try to bring is the smart factory. So we're not only thinking about the foundry itself and how to improve the machine, but we are also thinking about something that is similar to this angle system, as they said, like process control. So we have a lot of technology from a company called Jacobson that made X-ray uh, inspection systems for rims. And so what uh, we are going to do is, after the part has been casted by our machine, it'll be x-rayed immediately, uh, analyzed, and then those process parameters are being sent back to the foundry or to the, to the machine to kind of have this feedback loop and to improve uh, the whole part, every process. So after a certain amount of processes, you should have a perfect part. That um, is the idea. Exactly, and um, just as a part for anybody who's interested, okay, what's, what's with this prototype? Um, well, we, just now we've been funded by the German Federal Ministry of Economics and Climate uh, Protection, and the prototype should be finished by the end of next year. So, thumbs pressed. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you had a good conference, and looking forward to all the other presentations, and thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Meyer, for your for your very interesting presentation. So I'm a I'm a polymer guy, right? And yeah. composites guy. So uh, it'd be I'd I have I'd have a few questions for you. Uh, um, but are there any questions from the audience? I would like to give the audience a chance first. I see none so far. So. Um, so I worked myself in, in a kind of, I worked in my, doing my PhD with polymers, thermoplastic polymers, uh, um, uh, semi-crystalline thermoplastic polymers. So I was wondering, seeing, all, seeing your slurry mm. that you basically inject mm. in, your, in your forms, um, I, is there a certain preferred direction then as well when the material fully solidifies and crystallizes mm. as well? And, uh, and to what extent can you control this, this microstructure by the, the way, how far you come to this liquidus line that you've shown? So yeah. um, what, what, how can you, how can you uh, control parameters there, there your, your properties? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question because that's, um, I mentioned the precise temperature control and that's the key. So, and that's also the problem you have to, which we now see uh, doing the prototype, it's like you have, you need perfect temperature control because that's what makes the difference. That's kind of how, how you control the semi-solid slurry. If you heat it up too much, it's not semi-solid anymore. It just liquefies and then you don't have all the good properties. You need more energy and you cannot really control it. So the key, as you said, is temperature control. And there the key, on the other hand, is this revolver, this kind of cylindrical idea, which gives us the property to kind of heat all the material as good as possible and as precise as possible. And then, you, if, you're, if you have the temperature right, you can do anything with it, basically. You can okay. just control and say, I need a very thin wall. That's why I should t go with 75% liquid and 25% solid, mm -hmm. because that gives me the perfect uh, requirements for that part, which actually, right now, nobody does. Like, there's no, this is a kind of a, a thing that you can do, right? This, this, this adjustment of the, uh, liquid and solid ratio, but so far nobody basically has used it as an advantage. Yeah, but I think it's quite impressive since 94% energy reduction, what did you mention? Exactly. Yeah, I so mean, th this is a simulation. The idea is that uh, Professor Müller from the uh, Erlang from the university said he just did a study where he looked at, okay, how much energy do I need to physically melt the metal and how much energy is that compared to <laughs> Uh, the foundry or the, the yeah. casting it needs, and he comes up with 16 to 70 times more. 
So you need 70 times more energy in your foundry to do the same as you would in a you know perfect just as the phys physical energy would and you actually need, need to melt that you need. I mean, yeah. you'll always need more energy than the you know just the physical one. But 17 times is <laughs> is a bit lot. <laughs> yes. So and then your approach for big parts is okay. You simply have more dyes, Inject basically injection points, dyes, exactly. right? Um, so then temperature control becomes much more of a challenge, right? Yeah. Because you have a bigger container that has to be kept at a certain temperature. You have longer ways for the material to travel through your machine, where at all these uh, at all this, the whole distance, it has the material has to keep the, the exactly. proper temperature, yeah. or it has to be accounted for that it cools down, exactly, right? Yeah. So, uh, and you're working on that. So, the prototype yeah. you mentioned is, end is of next one year is, is, is one is one, is injection. one yeah. injection point. You got to okay. start small, so. yeah, yeah. Sure, <laughs> but as sure. soon as that works, the the rest, like as you said, I mean, it is complicated. But since every injection would have this this revolver, you, we could precisely. Uh, control every injection part. Every every point of the injection would be controllable by precise uh, temperature and and, and, and the, your main and also the shot the okay. the, the speed okay. of the shoot and ov obviously the pressure. You have a few parameters that you can okay. then play with. Cool. <laughs> and maybe to sum it up, so um, the main argument for you to use the semi-solid uh, material state is energy savings. That's one of okay. the two big things would be energy saving, which is huge or can potentially be very huge, and actually better material properties, especially in terms of porosity. Interesting. Okay. So you, you get a you get a porosity of 0.5% or okay. something, which also is not not possible with okay. other casting technologies. Okay. So we look forward to maybe seeing the machine in one or two years. Yeah, I hope so. next year or in two years. I'll just bring it. It'll be a bit heavy to carry, but I'll find a way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks Perfect. a lot. Uh, Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presentation again. Um, that was our afternoon session, Manufacturing Innovations 1.